I've been watching this ridiculous display of ignorance all day and I just had to tell you what was going on here. We'll start at the very beginning, which is Turkey sends a ship, six ships over and they say that they're taking humanitarian aid into Gaza and really right there is where, where everything went wrong because if they really wanted to get humanitarian aid into Gaza they could do what other nations do and that is ship the stuff to Ashdod and then the IDF checks and makes sure there's no weapons in there and then they send it in and that's why there's tons of stuff going into Gaza every day and there is no humanitarian crisis with people dying in the streets. But no, the IHH, which is on the IDF's list of charitable organizations that sponsor terror, decides they're going to send a ship. You should know from the get-go that I absolutely abhor violence. I think it's terrible that these people died. And I think if there were any innocent people that were killed, that the IHH, who was responsible for the ship, and responsible for everybody that boarded the ship from Turkey be held responsible. Quick note, the reason the Israelis took over the ship is because recently there have been ships going to Gaza that had weapons in them, like tons of weapons, missiles, and you know what they like to do with those missiles. And we took those ships without any shots fired. Really, you didn't hear about this? Yeah, the international community was so proud of us. That's why you heard about it all over the news. Right. And secondly, it should be noted that the blockade in Gaza is internationally recognized as legitimate. So I'm thinking there's just something in the back of the mind of every Israeli, like maybe these people really are peaceful, that kind of warps their thinking. Because I would think the IDF would be a little smarter than this. They boarded the ship of peace activists with paintball guns and stun grenades paintball guns, like the kind you use to play with. So when the commandos board the ship, they're met by these peace activists who have crowbars mm -hmm. and slingshots with marbles and knives and swords. Like who uses swords anymore? And one of the commandos testifies that he sees a rifle coming out of the corner and the peace activists open fire on them. So the commandos fire back with their paintball guns, which does basically nothing because the peace activists have life vests on. And I don't know about you, but when I think of a peace activist, I don't usually think about someone who's trained to take rifles out of the hands of Israeli commandos, of which two peace activists succeeded in doing. One of the commandos was thrown over the deck after he was beat, and another one reportedly jumped in the water because they were trying to lynch him. And I love what England had to say about this, that we use disproportionate force, like their swords and crowbars were no match for our paintball guns. In any case, at some point they realized the paintball gun thing just ain't working and they've got commandos lying wounded on the ground and so they pull out their rifles and shooting ensues. It should be noted that there were five other ships that were on the same mission and they were taken without any bloodshed at all. The other thing that I found very interesting is that it was like 5 o'clock in the morning. What are civilians doing on the deck of the ship? And secondly, if you really are a peace activist and you're going to get on a boat going to Gaza, I would think it would be a wise decision to find out who else is on this boat. So let's say you're this peace activist and you're on the boat with a bunch of freako terrorists. There's a chance you could get hurt, don't you think? And if there's commandos coming down on the boat, wouldn't it be a wise thing to go back to your cabin instead of grabbing crowbars and starting to hit them? And what's even weirder is the fact that they had live streaming video cameras filming this whole thing. The bottom line is, if Israel had not stopped the ship, it would have set a precedent for anybody else who would like to bring in whatever they want into the port of Gaza. But knowing that they would try to stop the ship, the setup was really a PR campaign. Who sets out on a ship with live streaming footage to Arab news channels? So the overall damage was done because that footage went out first. And the overall footage of the bigger picture only went out hours later after there were already protests and riots and Turkey's going to call their ambassador back to Turkey and really? But what's telling about the situation is the fact that world leaders commented and condemned Israel absolute calling us a terrorist nation piracy because it was in international waters, 
all sorts of outrageous comments without even hearing the whole story. Nobody had the full story. Israel is sitting on TV going, we don't even know everything that's going on. They've just brought the ship into Asheville. They're going to take it apart, see what's inside, send these people home. But already the consensus is Israel was wrong. I, for one, want to thank the IDF for protecting my family and my home.